We just had one of the craziest FNCSs in Fortnite history. We had Yomzo and Rise potentially getting cheated out of their first ever FNCS win by hackers. We had Thomas HD losing yet again by a single point. One sixth of an elimination is what separated first from second on EU. We have a whole bunch of other storylines to handle. How did Clicks end up holding up? How did Mr. Savage and Mongrel do? How did Asian Jeff do? There's lots to cover. Let's jump into it. Let's kick off talking about the closest FNCS in Fortnite history. EU came down to one single point. I know you think, Aussie, we've had one point differences before. True, but we haven't had it in a format like this. Each elimination on day two was worth six points. So it was one sixth of an elimination that separated first from second, but it gets even crazier. We had Mustache and Malabuka taking home the crown on 649 points. This is Malabuka's first ever FNCS win, and it's Mustache's second, but they just beat out none other than Thomas HD and Queasy. Now, if you've been following Fortnite history, you know Thomas HD is one of the best players of all time, but he has never won an FNCS. He has now missed out on FNCS by one point two separate times. This happened to him and Malabuka on the same time, uh, same team last year. But Thomas HD in the last game was fighting cringe off spawn and he went down to full damage. If Thomas HD have gotten that elimination, they would have won the FNCS. Thomas HD has now come top four in 12 of the 21 FNCSs and doesn't have the trophy. This man has now come second four times, third five times, and fourth three times. That history of placements is absolutely ridiculous to not have a win. But Thomas HD now has over 1 million earned. Same with Queasy. They are both in the 1 million earned club. They are a ridiculous duo. And both of them did qualify through to Copenhagen. On EU, there was two spots free. I shouldn't say Copenhagen, the global championship. We don't actually know where it is yet. Yet. But Queasy and Thomas and Mustache and Malibu have both booked their tickets to the $2 million LAN event in September. But people were still sad to see Thomas HD still not have a trophy in the cabinet, but he is playing phenomenal. And both these duos put on such a big show. Going through the rest of the top five, we had Kiro and Kiduo in third, a super underrated pick coming into this FNCS. Sangild and Marius in fourth, and Vico and Pink in fifth. Now, I want to point out for these three teams specifically, they were actually the top three teams on day two. Sangild and Marius got 493 points on the second day alone. So they managed to get almost 500 of their 563 points in the second day. They went from 39 to fourth in a single day of competition. A huge, huge comeback for a super underrated team. Kiro and Kiroa got 478 points on day two and Vico and Pink got 402. Now, Kiro and Kiroa versus Vico and Pink is a very interesting one because they were actually contesting each other off spawn and fighting each other every single game for the forecast tower. This is pretty much what led to such a bad day one for both of them. You think going to day two, they changed the whole bunch. They, they went a different drop spot. No, both these teams were still dropping near each other, still fighting all the time. They still just both both managed to play so incredibly well, they got top five finishes while being contested. It's worth pointing out on EU, all of these top five teams actually were all contested for the majority of the games this weekend in grand finals. The main reason for all of these teams doing so well, well contested was obviously that day two point format with a one and a half times multiplier. So there was way more points up for grabs on day two, but it was also because of the more aggressive storm surge change. If you watched my streams during the weekend or you watch any social media, you would have heard about it. But basically a few days before FNCS grand finals, Fortnite decided to make storm surge more aggressive. More players had to die. It was going to be more punishing for players who didn't get their damage. This would then go on to reward teams who did really, really well in their spawn battles because they had surge going into the end game. So even though they'd go down a couple of the games out of 12, if they consistently won their spawn fights, they were at a huge advantage. And honestly, I am a massive fan of this Storm Surge. Originally, I wasn't a huge fan of changing Storm Surge so close to grand finals, but at the same time, you kind of have to follow the same game plan, but just a little bit more. You have to do a little bit more damage. You have to play a little bit more aggressive, but it really did separate the teams that could win their fights and take fights consistently from those who couldn't. The teams that were you know, known for being more passive, like Kami and Seti, struggled a lot in this new format coming in 33rd. So there are some teams who it's not as well suited for, but from a viewer standpoint, I loved it. It made the mid game way more exciting. It made teams that were contested not feel like their FNCS was completely over. And it also made the end games less laggy, which is one of the main reasons why Fortnite wanted to do it. So I know why pros might be frustrated about it, especially because it changed only a few days before Grand Finals. I wish that wasn't the case, but for me personally, I absolutely love this change and it made Grand Finals so exciting to watch. 
How about some of our other big names on EU? We did have Vidil and Rezon drop down to seventh place. They were actually in first place at one point, which was going to be huge for Rezon winning his first FNCS, but still a very impressive performance. I want to shout Diox and Cade in, a, in 12th. Diox and Cade are a double controller duo. And on EU, remember, we've had 21 FNCSs now and not a single one of them has ever been won by an EU controller player. So very awesome to see Diox and Cade at one point actually in the top three for the majority of the tournament. Very very impressive for a double controller duo. We had Yanis and Flixie who were expected to do extremely well, who were doing well day one. Unfortunately, come unstuck towards the end of day two. They finished a little bit weak in there. We did also have Venno and Tayson in 15th, a pretty underwhelming performance for one of the clear favorites. They were doing really, really well on day one. And again, day two didn't really go their way. Seti and Kami already touched on struggling quite a lot. Obviously, the big one, Mongrel and Savage finishing in 40th place overall. Their spawn situation was just a nightmare. I talked about it in the video the other day. Even when they won their spawn fight, which was a straight 50-50, they would instantly get third party, instantly get cleaned up. They had a pretty miserable weekend across the board, but... The viewership was crazy. They were pulling in hundreds of thousands of viewers. I think I saw Mr. Savage alone peak at almost 200,000. It was insane. We had Phaser, Kame, and King. So again, our Brazilian duo coming from Argentina all the way over and competing in Germany. They ended up getting 41st overall. They had a much better day two once they switched up their drop spot, but still overall a pretty underwhelming performance for a team that had a lot of high hopes on them. Moving on over to NA, we had a much less exciting finish in terms of the closest of the leaderboard. We had Acorn and Cold absolutely dominating NA FNCS finishing on 898 points almost 900 points when second place Peterbot and Poyo only had 721 now remember I say only 721 now remember EU has won on 649 so Peterbot and Poyo still had an insane performance over 70 points higher than the winner on EU Acorn and Cole just played that much better they were ridiculously impressive during this tournament and again you'll probably notice Acorn and Cole just like Mr. Asha Malibuka. Both of them were dropping at fencing field. Both of them were triple contested. They played extremely well this weekend and 100% deserved this win. Except there is a big asterisk currently on this FNCS and it is a topic that is a little bit sad. And again, it has not been proven, but Iomzo and Rise, unfortunately being first place going into game number nine, only a few games left in the tournament. They couldn't load into game number nine and 10 because their internet was extremely suspiciously dropping out right as they went to queue into each game. They have said that they were actually getting DDoS, which if you don't know what that is, it's a, den a directed denial of service, pretty much, or dedicated denial of service, pretty much someone has the IP address of Ryze and Yomzo's setup. They were both playing from the same room because they'd flown from Canada to Dallas to get better ping. And they were basically flooding the internet with a whole bunch of information that was causing it to crash. Now, again, this hasn't been substantiated. I'm not calling Ryze and Yomzo liars. It seems like it was extremely suspicious. Every single time it would happen is right before they would go to play games. It's it's extremely unfortunate see whether they were just lagging because of bad luck or whether it was someone doing it maliciously the point still stands that Yomzo and Ryze still finished in eighth place overall with only 10 matches played and in the last two games Yomzo has said basically he couldn't play because either he was so upset he just couldn't focus because he'd been crying so much and he was still continually lagging in the last few games so super sad to see that NA kind of has this bit of an asterisk on it I think Acorn and Cold played phenomenal and I would have loved to have seen the finish of Yomzo and 12 uh, Yomzo and Rise finishing out their 12 games against Acorn and Cold, but we'll never know. Going through the rest of the NA leaderboard, like I said, Acorn and Cold in first, Peterbot and Poyo in second. Peterbot was putting on an absolute highlight reel. The broadcast was showing some of the most ridiculous shots I have ever seen out of them. We had Aviv and Booga in third place. I know Booga gets a lot of the spotlight being the World Cup champion. A lot of people focus on him, but it does always seem like he kind of just appears on the leaderboard. He's always like around that kind of top 10, top five, and then he just jumps up always at the end of a tournament, clutching up a third place overall. Booga was a little bit upset last game had a chance to potentially get the second place over Peterbot and Poyo and Asian Jeff and Oliver OG had to go for a very aggressive storm surge play onto Booga he wasn't too happy about it jumped on social media then realized the situation deleted it ruffled a bit of feathers but honestly it was a very very rough situation for Booga he just happened to be the team that Asian Jeff and OG needed to go for their surge on then number four we had clicks and epic whale a lot of focus on clicks coming into his FNCS as his best chance to win it he's an absolute demon with the sniper rifle has uncontested lavish lair he's playing with six time fn chess champs epic whale he couldn't bring it home but honestly a phenomenal performance i have to speak like volumes for clicks individually here as well on day one he did six 
8,000 damage. The next closest player in the entire lobby was 4,000. That is absolutely ridiculous. He was also the highest damage dealer on day two as well. So the highest damage done on both days, absolutely popping off from an uncontested PY. And most of it was due to the snipers. Clicks was incredibly happy with his fourth place. A lot of people are saying they wished he placed higher. This is his chance to win. But again, Clicks was super happy. His content numbers were insane. I saw him peak at like almost 150,000 viewers on Twitch. It was ridiculous. They played extremely well. And then in fifth place, another team with high expectations, Ritual and Reed. They played really, really well. Again, they didn't have as easy of a time going for the forecast tower on day one. They did on day two and it massively increased their performance, but a very, very rough last few games, a 38th and a 26th in two of their last three games did drop them down a little bit, but a top five is still extremely impressive. And then I do want to shout out sixth place as well, Noxy and Crisp, a very, very underrated team coming into this grand finals. I was not focusing on them at all. They were actually looking phenomenal and they got a 11 Elim win in their second last game. They did go down a little bit early in their last game, but still a sixth place was ridiculous for such an underrated team. Going through the rest of the leaderboard, like I said, Iomzo and Ryze in eighth place, very unfortunate situation for them. Skittles and Trashy, a very dominant performance for them in seventh. We had Cooper and Mero, the reigning Copenhagen champions in ninth. Barker, Paz in 10th for the West boys. Sphinx and Pump doing extremely well. So Pump and Trashy both since splitting up have got a top 11 with their respective duos. Death and Polarized, who I was really excited to see Polarized at one point in the top five, looking like he was going to confirm that he is not just a ranked warrior. I think a 12th in grand finals is still extremely impressive, but I know he was hoping for a little bit more. We had AIDS and Kanata in 13th. My pick to actually win this grand finals until they were surprise conned by Rise and Raise and Higher, which did affect their tournament a lot. They really brought it back on day two. They were having an insane run on day two until Kanata didn't load into the 12th game, which dropped them down a little bit, but they played so well to come back from almost last place on the first day. We then had uh, Muzz and Paper in 14th overall. Dukes and Threats doing really well in 16th. We had Scented and Tahi in 22nd. Day and Redux. We did unfortunately have some uh, uh, underwhelming performances from some of the big names. Asian Jeff and Oliver OG in 32nd, but they just really struggled with Storm Surge. They made it really only to, I think, one rotating zone this weekend. They were in such a terrible POI for the Storm Surge changes, dropping on the far northeast of the map. As soon as they changed Storm Surge, and they already made what was going to be their biggest issue so much worse and they did suffer because of it but I'm still very impressed with their performance Jivan and Piggle did drop out of the top 25 on day one to drop down to 37th on day two Piggle was in my stream saying he just honestly didn't play well which was sad to see but still I'm super proud of them even making the finals and it was a super super exciting finals to watch